Alien entities, what are they? What does that mean? In this series of teachings, Dr. Lester Sumrall talks about the spiritual aspects of people with multiple personalities and those plagued with clinical depression. He also shares how the church should have the answers to any human problem, including alien entities. Stay tuned for this fascinating series that teaches people how Jesus Christ can set people free. Thank you very much, and we, we salute those um, studying with us uh, by satellite. This is a new thing in the world to bring you into a classroom like this. We have a great, beautiful uh, group uh, right here with us in our, in our first stage of our study, and they are from an, a great number of different denominations, and they have come with intensity that they might know and understand knowing that these are the last days in which we live today and that we need a different breed of Christian today than we did yesterday and we need men with real relationships with God in order to perform the needs uh, that our generation present. And so we are studying alien entities uh, from the Word of God, believing that God is going to use us. <laughs> uh, we, we are not studying for a storehouse to stick it in there, lock it up and keep it, you know. Uh, we're studying for truth to flow out of us, that flow out of us to set humanity free. And that's what we want you to enjoy, all of you. We're studying uh, what is lesson two in your, in your teaching uh, uh, syllabus. Uh, it is lesson three in the series uh, that you will have by audio tape or videotape. What are these alien entities that we will have to come up against? Uh, let's identify our enemy in order, in order that we might best know how to, uh, um, how to fight, how to war, and how to win. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, and verse 8, it says, For he said unto them, unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is your name? And he answering said, My name is Legion, for we are many. What are these alien things that, that take upon themselves to live within a human person? In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 29 and 30, it says, Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house, uh, which he's talking about the devil here, and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. He is teaching his disciples here that if you're going to enter to the devil's territory and take those that are serving the devil, you better first hit the devil. <laughs> hit the strong man first, or if you don't, he'll hit you while you're trying to win a soul. There are people that go out to the mission field, uh, you know, to, to win a soul, and they get out there, and the devil gives them every disease he can. He just keeps knocking them out, and they're always down and not up. And then they say, well, well, hey, 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 what's happened? You didn't bind the strong man. When you go out there, the first thing you do is lay him out. You say, hey, I'm coming out here against you, and I'm going to fight you, and I'm going to defeat you, and I plead the blood of Jesus against you, and I have come to take a prey. I'm going to steal everything you got away from you all these precious souls. Well, bless God, <laughs> uh, we're winners, and so we just keep on winning. Can you say amen? amen? The only ones he can win is those he can deceive, and if we can break the deception, then he can't keep any of them at all. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 29 says, and, and behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before our time? These are what we mean by alien entities. Let's read another scripture, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 14. And when they were come 
to the multitude there came to him a certain man kneeling down saying, Lord, or, or, to Jesus, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic. He is sore vexed. Oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often to the water. The devil would try to burn him to death and try to drown him. I, I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. Isn't that the same problem you have with the churches today? It, it just, you know, it hurts you on the inside. Jesus said, you faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring the child to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. Now that's who the alien entities are. And, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. And, and, and that's exactly what we're going to teach about. Then came the disciples of Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? Now, there, there's a problem for you, and it's heard throughout the land today. I've heard God only knows how many ministers, uh, and even the last 12 months that have asked me that, saying, why can't I do it? Jesus, in verse 20, Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. You want to pause there for a moment? If you don't believe, you can't. If you do believe, you can. And it's not according to your strength, not according to your wisdom. It's by His strength and His power and His wisdom we do this. He didn't say it's because of your lack of knowledge. He, did, he says because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. I say unto you, if you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Brother, if you've got enough faith, Jesus said, nothing shall be impossible to you. And then you need to study what faith is. <laughs> That's a whole other series. You study what faith is. It, it isn't imagination, and it isn't hope. Yeah, and it isn't just saying, I'm going to have this or that, when you don't have it. It, it's, it goes a lot deeper than that. It's a principle. It's a life that you live. Faith is a life that you live. Jesus said in verse 21, How be it, and this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Now, that teaches you a lot there. You ought to put a little circle around that verse uh, 21. And that is that there are different kinds of spirits to be cast out, and that some spirits are stronger than other spirits, and that there are certain spirits that you need a, a, a greater preparation for yourself than you would for another kind of spirit. You getting it all there? Now, 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 if you don't learn these things, you won't ever be able to be victorious in the ministry of casting out these spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, an alien entity now is a, is a foreigner uh, to the human race. Uh, he has no passport. He's not, he's not legitimate. And uh, he is not a citizen. And he is an alien, and he comes to destroy. Jesus says he comes to destroy and to kill. In Revelation 12 and 7, we find these words. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. Uh, the dragon is called the devil in the, in the book of Revelation. He, he is called the devil. And so here you find a war, and the Bible says it was in heaven, a war that was in heaven. And it says that Michael, who was an archangel, uh, in heaven there were three archangels. There was Michael, the archangel of, that t cares for the military uh, uh, relationships with God, the, the fighting angel. And there was Gabriel, the, the telecommunication angel that cares all the messages. Wherever in the Bible somebody's getting a message, it's always Gabriel that's there. And, and then you had Lucifer who, who led the choir and who led the praise and, and, and who led the worship in heaven. And so you have three mighty contingencies of angels that could have had a hundred million in each in each area, because heaven, heaven is so great. And in this third one, there was war because of his lifting himself up and, ex and exalting himself. And, and if we haven't gotten into it, we certainly will get into it again. Uh, that, uh, and that he got cast out, and, and there was the beginning of your 
entity that came from another world. He is alien to this place. He don't belong here. This is not his home. This world don't belong to him. The Bible says that everything that God made on this earth belongs to man. Are you here? So, so he don't belong here. He's not a resident here. He has no passport to get here. And, and, and we have no relationship with him except to put him out. And we cast one out. We say, you go back into the void of space. We send him back where he came from. We keep him off of planet earth. Can you say amen? amen? So there was war. Michael, the archangel, and with his mighty host, they fought against uh, Lucifer, or the dragon, with all of his angels. And prevail not. Uh, Lucifer could not prevail. Neither was there found any more place in heaven for him. And, and the great dragon was cast out, and God was afraid you wouldn't quite know who he was talking about. So he says, who is that old serpent called the devil and Satan? Now, how many have identified him? Yeah. He is the one that deceived the whole world. Doesn't that hurt you down inside? Deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. They're soon going to lose even the principality of the air. He is, he, is, he is the prince of the air at this moment, but he's going to lose that also. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of our Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. You ought to draw a little line on that. I hope to say more about it. The accuser of our brethren is cast down. That when he can't keep hurting you, he goes up to heaven and talks bad about you. Who lacks tattletales? He's the worst. The accuse of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. See his activities? You know what he says? Oh, yeah, you, yeah, they got that pretty home. You let it burn down with fire and they'll cuss you. Oh, yeah, he did get that good job. Let him lose it and he'll cuss you. So he's only serving you because he's got a good job. The Bible says that the devil, day and night, accuses us before God, just like, just like in the book of Job. He's, he's a bad devil. Verse 11 says, But they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, heavens, ye that dwell in them, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that his time is short. Now, if you've got your pencil there with you, uh, you ought to draw a little circle around two things there. One of them is great wrath, and the other is short time. Just draw a little circle around it, and you'll see, you'll see the picture of the devil. He's very angry. He's limited in time. And we're going to make it more limited for him. <laughs> we're going to make it more limited for him. In Jesus' name. All right, that's your A. And, and the B, which is 1 Thessalonians 2, 18, it says, Therefore, or wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered me, or hindered us. You know, there are, there, there are people that intend to do something for God, and the, the most, now let's be honest. How many people have more little things happen on Sunday morning than any other time of the week? Well, you would have been in church. It was Satan that hindered you. You're going to have to kick him out of the way and get in that car and get on over there. And if the great apostle uh, had such a circumstance, uh, then you and I can't expect anything less. We want to do things for God, but I want to tell you one thing. Just because he hinders, he can't keep us from doing it. He may hinder a little, but you can even push that hindrance out of the way. You can say, I don't accept this hindrance. And you, you'll, you'll do it. You'll do it in Jesus' name. Uh, I have a, something about me that's a little different, I presume. I don't know when I'm having a hard time. You see, I was born just as World War I began. And when there's a World War on, times are not too good. And when it was over, I went through the Great Depression and did all my first preaching during the Great Depression. I preached for a whole week and got 26 cents for it. No nickels, they were all pennies. Nobody had a nickel they could give, just pennies. And so I, I have come to know, you know, wh what it means not to have things on the face of this earth. I've been as far as Hong Kong 
not when we lived there with a family, but as a young man, going around the world, and all the money I had at that moment was 10 cents. I've never been broke. <laughs> but I didn't spend that dime either, or I would have been. I held on to that. But I have come to know one thing. If my trust is in the Lord, when I had that 10 cents in Hong Kong, before I left that city, a Chinese lady gave me a gift so large that I can't, I had never received a gift like that before, and I don't know how many years later it was before I ever received a gift as large as that Chinese lady gave me. She was a general's wife, and she was dying, and I laid hands on her, and God healed her, and she says, I have to show my appreciation, and here's the money I had to give to the doctors in the hospital for you, and she gave me $100 bills like that. It took me all the way to Tibet and back and all through the mainland of China, one little woman. All because God healed her, you see. I couldn't claim any glory for it because he did all the healing. Uh, but uh, God can answer prayer, and God can do things for you, and God will help you. So if the devil hinders, kick him. Glory be to God. And being close enough to hinder, he can be kicked. In 1 Peter 5 and 8, we read to you in, in one of our lessons that we, should be, that we should be sober and vigilant because we do have an adversary. Now, that's the reason we're teaching this. There is an adversary. And, it's, and, it, and it says that this adversary is the devil. Uh, you read it right there in 1 Peter 5 and 8. That identifies the adversary. He is like a roaring lion. He wants to devour us. With, those, with that amount of truth, we know how to come against him, how to destroy him by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 9 of that same scripture, it says, Whom resist steadfast in the faith. That gives you the whole thing right there. If you will cling to that, you'll have it. It says, you resist him steadfast in the faith. You know, you got the whole system right there. Not with your brain, not with your brawn. You, you resist him in your faith, you see. And if you resist him steadfast, then it says, knowing that the same afflictions are, have been accomplished in your brethren. Uh, there's never been anyone that the devil hasn't tried to hurt whether it was Moses, whether it was Abraham, uh, whether it was David. It matters not. The devil has tried to hurt every human that's ever been on the face of this earth. Don't think you're having the worst time that anybody ever had because there are others having the same kind of times you're having. And God is delivering. Can you say amen? God is delivering. Now, these alien entities, not only are they real, which you receive there uh, in, in, those, in those thoughts, but these alien entities have their own doctrines they preach. I, I would like some time to sit down and to write down everything that I think the devil teaches. Man, it would, be, it would be something, wouldn't it? It would be something. Yeah, he teaches that homosexualism is good. And like I told the leader of it, I said, if all the roosters were like you, we'd give out of eggs in a hurry. <laughs> I said, if all the bulls were like you, we wouldn't have any beef on the table either. Well, he told the others not to discuss the subject with me, that I wasn't nice to talk to. <laughs> the devil, one of his doctrines is that abortion's all right. Kill a, kill a million and a half little babies in a year, that's all right. You could do that, you see. Oh, the devil's got doctrines. We don't believe in one of them. In 1 Timothy 4 and 1 says, The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, now, now there, there's a truth for you to, 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 uh, to go in depth in, in that the Spirit is Spirit, and, and the typist there didn't put that uh, S there with a capital S. You look in your Bible and you see that it is a capital S. Uh, that the, the Spirit speaketh expressly now, now, I mean, he is talking right down to you, or, you know, with great emphasis to you. Don't get away from it. Don't, don't lose it. Uh, he says e expressly that in these latter times, uh, people are going to follow seducing spirits, and they're going to follow doctrines that the devil cooked up. The biggest one the devil could ever cook up is that God's Word is not true. Don't believe it. Live like you want to. And, brother, that's a bad one. Uh, we're not going to believe it. Every word in the Bible came from God. It's for us today, and we're going to cling to it. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. And point number three, on your page six there, alien entities wish to communicate with human persons. Now, 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 that third point 
comes down to what we're really getting after. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 20, the great apostle says, I say that the things that the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to the devils and not to God. Now, you, you've got to either believe the Bible or not believe it. I, I've gone in one temple in China that had 10,000, it was a Buddhist temple, had 10,000 different gods in one temple. I mean, there were 10,000 different images. It, it wasn't just named that. It, it was that. That's what it was. It was a temple of 10,000 gods, you see. And, and uh, what are they? Well, I, I talked to the head priest there about them. I said, uh, I said now here's a, the, out in the center was a great big Buddha. He must have been 20, 30 feet high, so it was an enormous thing made of bronze, very expensive. And I, through my interpreter, I called the priest over and I said, now what can this one do, you know? It's always nice to be ignorant. And I said, what can, what can this one do? And he looked at me and he said, well, right now, nothing. Well, I said, well, what you got it here for if you can't do anything? Well, he says, you see down in front, uh, we, we, bring in, we bring in food, rice, and, 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 uh, and, and vegetables, and, and, and then we bring in the candles, and we light the candles, and then I begin to pray, and says, he's off wandering around, and he'll come into the, into the image here, and then I want to tell you he can do things. We've got all kind of testimonies of what he's done. Well, I said, that gets much simpler. I said, you don't even need this big old fat Buddha here at all. All you need is that spirit that comes and goes. He's the one that's doing it all. All you need is just that spirit. And if you've got that spirit, you've got it made. Well, he said, well, yeah, yeah, that, that, that would be it. Yeah. Well, I said, well, you can take him down because you told me that he couldn't do anything <coughs> and that the spirit that's in the mountains now had to come back inside of him. And then, and he showed me a hole in the back of him. So this is where the spirit of the idol goes in and out. Paul said here that which the Gentiles, uh, the nation, sac they sacrifice to devils. They sacrifice to devils. I was up in the high mountains of Luzon and uh, in, into a, a tribe there. I had built them a, a church. A few of them had gotten saved. And I, I built them a little, a little church, and I went up, to, uh, went up to dedicate it. And right in the center of their village they had there, uh, they had a tree that in the tropics didn't have a leaf on it. Didn't have a single leaf on it. But every two or three inches, it was crooked. I have never seen such a crooked tree in the whole of the world. It was diabolically crooked. And down at the bottom of it was their place of worship. And they told me, it says, our God is the God of the tree. And our, our God lives in that tree. And we come here to worship our God. Now, I could walk there at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and say, where's your God? Oh, they say, that God's not here right now. He's off gone somewhere. But said, when I, bring out, when I bring out the sacrifice and when I light the candles, it's amazing how heathen light candles. And when I light the candles and I begin to pray, he comes, he comes. He says he's mighty powerful when he comes. Well, Paul says the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. And they don't sacrifice to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I would not that you have, that you have fellowship with devils. And then verse 21, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. I didn't believe the Bible. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to tell you that now. A lot of your neighbors don't. You, you read that to some of your preachers and ask them what that means. You say, well, I really don't know. I don't know. So an alien entity... In our lessons here, we can call them AEs, if you like, for brief. <laughs> They're a foreign agent or a foreign spirit who seeks to live in a human person and comes to possess that person here on this, part, on this earth. He wants to possess an earth person. So an, an alien entity is a spirit. Personality has no corporality. But personality, which occupies no physical space. Get it now. If you don't get that, you won't know why the man had 2,000 in him. I met one man that claimed to have 30 and 40 and 50 spirits in him, but not, not 2,000. Occupies no physical space in a human person, yet controls many of the activities of that person. It's, it's, it's a phenomenon. It's something worth studying, really, you know. 
An alien entity is malign. They're basically evil, but be being Lucifer's agents. They destroy normal functions of the human person in society. Now that's what an, in, that's what an insane person does. That's what a demon-possessed person does. They destroy the no normal functions of living. And I have seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. They destroy the normal functions of living. These alien entities are fallen angels from heaven. They are now called demon spirits and not angel spirits. And since they're under the leadership of Satan, their master, they hate God because of the loss of their position in heaven. They hate God. Not being able to reach God, to battle with God, they seek to destroy God's creation. And you, my friend, happen to be the apex of all of God's creation, and these spirits hate you. They hate human beings. There's no need of running from it. But I'll tell you one thing, in the whole Bible, there's not one scripture that tells you to be afraid. How I many like that? Yeah. If anybody told you to be afraid, it was your backslidden preacher. It wasn't God, and it wasn't the Bible. The Bible says, go get them. Cast them out. Resist them. That's what the Bible says. How many are going to follow the Bible? Amen. An alien entity forever seeks a human body for a manifestation of his self-interest. That's one of the greatest truths. You ought to really make a circle around it. That an alien entity forever seeks a human body, and if that man dies, he immediately seeks to enter into another body for the manifestation of his self-interest which is to destroy the works of God. Therefore, this subject is not a side issue. You can take it if you want to, leave it if you want to. That is not true. If the church does not take this issue up, demon power will destroy the functions of the church. Like it's doing in this country with so many evils that are standing up against the Christian church in this country. Christians must not be ignorant concerning their existence, nor their operations. We must know that God is a conqueror, mighty and strong, and that we can set persons free from those things, and they are forever free. They are forever free. And I'll tell you one more thing. With the blood of Jesus Christ around you, they can't touch you at all anyway. The Word of God says, how can I curse whom God hath not cursed? <laughs> it's impossible. And anybody says, I'm going to curse you, say, just try it. So you'll get a double whammy right back in your face because I'll send it back. I don't believe in it. If you do, take it. I hope that you've been enlightened by today's teaching series by my father, Dr. Lester Sumrall. So many people have been blessed by his teachings on God's Word. If you are one of those people, I would love to hear from you. Write me at the address on the screen. I am Peter Sumrall, and thank you for watching and supporting LaCie Broadcasting.